Number 10, Britney Spears. Oh baby, baby. How was I supposed to know that Kelly didn't like her at all? Recently, pop singer Britney Spears has addressed a long-standing grudge that she's had since 2007. Spears commented that Clarkson did an interview for a radio station called Q100 around the same time that Britney had just released her album Blackout and was going through a highly publicized divorce from dancer Kevin Federline. In the radio interview, Clarkson quipped that it would be funny if Britney was pretending to be having a hard time simply to promote her album. She went on to point out that Britney had done little to no press for her album, which Kelly totally loves by the way, just to let us all know. I'm sorry, did you want Britney to take time out of her busy schedule, touring, dealing with a nasty divorce, and having her entire life controlled by her father? Oops, sorry, looks like she can't make Fallon tonight to do that promotional video. Number 9, Ellen. After 19 seasons of her long-running talk show, Ellen called it quits and cancelled the program following allegations of a toxic work environment. Do you see where I'm going with this? Those allegations were confirmed after Warner Bros. Brothers did an investigation into the day-to-day -day operations of the studio and found some flaws in the system. Behind the scenes, staff members were being mistreated and bullied, with many even claiming that working for the show was mental torture. With the cancellation of The Ellen DeGeneres Show comes a primetime afternoon slot on TV, and Kelly Clarkson's show swooped in to take it. This was a good move for Kelly and her ratings, but check this out. I think Ellen, in her last act of power before being canceled by the world, was to replace her own toxic show with an another one that she knew would be just as bad. Ellen must have set this up so that Kelly and her show would also get investigated and be exposed for the toxic environment that it truly is. This seems to have worked as rumors are now circulating from former employees of the show claiming similar wrongdoings from Clarkson. Will these rumors hold merit? Eh, only time will tell. We'll end the news. Number 8, Blake Shelton. Country music artist Blake Shelton has been a judge on The Voice since day one of the show. But ever since Kelly sat in that big red chair, herself and Blake have had quite the beef. While initially their back and forth banter on the show was seen as entertaining, the longer it went on, the more real the situation was becoming. In the eyes of the on-screen viewers, these two were in a serious workplace dispute and it distracted people from the actual singers on the stage. Clarkson and Blake would have spats over the years, but recently it was announced that Shelton would be vacating his red chair and leaving the show at the end of season 23. While longtime fans of the show were noticeably upset, Kelly was thrilled by this announcement, claiming that this move was a gain for humanity in her own words, because we get to see less of him now. Now, hold on, uh, let me just find my flashlight. I think there's a little bit of shade in here, it's kind of dark. Shelton responded saying that he would be happy to stay on the show for a 24th season on the condition that Kelly get let go instead. Yeah, there's too much Kelly on TV. We don't need more Kelly. Kelly's comments are very mean-spirited, which contrasts her talk show persona of happy and positive. So maybe Blake's leaving the show has some merit. Maybe it's for a reason, who knows? Number seven, Steve Harvey. Show me liar. Number one answer, look at that on the board. Steve Harvey is well known as the host of the popular game show Family Feud, as well as a truly wonderful spokesman and life coach. It's jarring then to hear that Steve doesn't like Kelly at all. In 2017, Steve decided to transition into hosting a different type of program. He created the talk show, Steve, where his goal was to bring a late night talk show atmosphere to an afternoon crowd. From this show, the world was gifted some wonderful and pure moments with Steve. He told us his life story and gave us advice on how to succeed in our own. However, Kelly Kelly wanted a better time slot, and after lots of trying, the studio ultimately decided to cancel Steve's show in favor of Kelly's. This did not sit well with Harvey, as he's been very vocal about his disagreements with the decision and Kelly as a host. You gotta wonder, if a man this pure is having problems with you, maybe you should look inward. Number 6, Avril Lavigne. In 2002, Avril Lavigne was one of the most popular artists around. I can still hear Skater Boy being blared at top volumes from my sister's room. It's just, it's wonderful. Those men magazine posters will haunt me for the rest of my life. At the Video Music Awards of that year, Kelly Clarkson was presenting Avril with an award for Best New Artist for her song Complicated. Whether it was on purpose or not, Avril elbowed Clarkson as she was accepting the speech. She got Kelly right in the face, but was so in the moment that she just didn't even notice and just like kept giving her speech. A few years later, after running into Clarkson at an event, Avril apologized profusely, claiming that she had no idea and had been blasted about it for years 
but I don't know. Watching the clip when it happens, it almost seems like her arm gained sentience for a minute and like used that moment to hit Kelly. Like, what does her elbow know? What is it trying to warn us about? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bob Saget. Are you a fan of Full House? Then you probably know Bob Saget as Danny Turner in the show. Well, a lot of rumors have been going around about Bob and uh, saying that he was inappropriate to the Olsen twins when they were on the show. First off, he admitted to being inappropriate with the Michelle stand in, which was a real life Michelle sized doll that they would use to prepare for the scenes when Mary Kate or Ashley weren't available for practice. He would get handsy with the doll and do disturbing things with it. The worst is what was said about him during the Comedy Central roast. A lot of the comedians made jokes about Bob taking advantage of the twins while on set. One joke talks about how Bob was only interested in the girls until they turned 21. But that is nothing compared to how dark and disgusting the other jokes were. Although they are jokes, it makes you wonder if there's any truth behind them. In our fourth spot, we have Marilyn Manson. Antichrist superstar Marilyn Manson has done some highly controversial things over the years, like engaging in self harm on stage during one of his concerts. In 1995, he took a broken beer bottle and plunged it into his chest and then dragged it across his skin, wounding himself and leaving a permanent scar. He also got arrested at a Jacksonville, Florida concert for uh, using adult toys publicly and then urinating on the crowd. Or how about the time he went grave digging and took human skeletal remains? He then took it back to his hotel and put the bones in a pipe and smoked it. I mean, that's just some of the many dark and messed up things that Manson has done. The list is very lengthy. In our third spot, we have Bill Cosby. For years, there were allegations of Bill Cosby taking advantage of women. Then in 2014, comedian Hannibal Burris made a joke in his stand-up routine about Bill Cosby and all of this. That shit is upsetting. If you didn't know about it, trust me. If you leave here, Google Bill Cosby. The joke went viral and it allowed dozens of women to come forward and say that they were victims. By 2015, there were 35 women who came forward. As years went on, the number increased to more than 60 women. What's crazy is that The Cleveland Show and Family Guy all made jokes about Bill Cosby and what he was doing to women years ago. This was years before the situation came to light. So people were out here warning everyone about Bill for years. In our second spot, we have Kevin Spacey. Over the years, a number of men have come forward claiming that Kevin Spacey tried to make advancements on them or that he had taken advantage of them. It started in 2017 when Anthony Rapp claimed that when he was 14, Spacey made a sexual advancement towards him. It didn't take long for other actors to come forward with similar accusations. But it seems like people in Hollywood knew about Spacey years before the allegations came forward. In 2005, Family Guy made a joke about Spacey in a season 4 episode, as a dare, Stewie runs naked through a mall, saying, Help! I've escaped from Kevin Spacey's basement. In 2017, when Anthony came forward, one of Family Guy's showrunners got questioned, and he admitted, and I quote, that there have always been rumors out there about him. And in our number one spot today, we have Harvey Weinstein. Years before Harvey Weinstein was exposed, a number of celebrities tried to warn us about him. Let's take a look at this interview with Courtney Love from 2005. While on a red carpet event for the Pamela Anderson Comedy Central roast, Love was asked if she had any advice for a young girl moving to Hollywood. She said, and I quote, if Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party in the Four Seasons Hotel, don't go. After saying this, Love apparently got eternally banned from CAA, Creative Artist Agency. But wait, there's more! Elijah Woods was another celebrity who tried to warn everyone about Weinstein, and then he got blacklisted for doing so. He said that as a child he was never allowed to go to the Hollywood parties, because people of power would take advantage of the young stars there. He said, and I quote, If you're innocent, you have very little knowledge of the world world and you want to succeed. People with parasitic interests will see you as their prey. 
But no one listened to him. He tried to expose them and stop these disgusting things from happening. Instead, he got boycotted by major studios because of this. Starting off our list day at number 10, we have John Maloney. Timothy Chalamet in John's Twitter beef was so lovely and tender that it wasn't really beef at all. During John's stand up set during Seth Rogen's hilarity for charity, he would explain why he was so annoyed with the actor when he revealed that his wife had a major crush on him. And then he would recall how him and his wife had an argument about John and Timothy's height. Of course, after the internet watched the event, they would see if Timothy had seen the clip. And not only did he see it, but he also responded with a brief yet genius joke of his own when he took to Twitter to say, yes, I watched it from the gas station. At first, that might seem like a random location to catch up on a latest Netflix viewing, but for those that turned in to see John and Nick Kroll's host the 2018 film Independent Spirit Awards, it was a callback to a joke about Timothy's attire for the evening, which Nick compared to that of a gas station attendant. In the end, John did reply to the actor with both a heartfelt apology and invitation to do the amazing race together. Number nine, Lily Rose Depp. Despite sharing some beautiful moments together, Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rose Depp broke up, with some reports suggesting that the couple first split in early 2020 because of business reasons. Many then speculated that their split was probably because of their busy schedules, and that probably meant that they had no time to spend together. Another angle would be the two broke up, and it was hinted that there was a third party involved, as Lily Rose was linked to Austin Butler briefly after they broke up, and soon after Timothy split from Lily, he was pictured kissing Mexican actress Isa Gonzalez. In 2021, reports would then indicate that Timothy was spotted hanging out with Lily again, but nothing really happened after that, and they both both remain single. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming number eight, we have Pete Davidson. So in 2021, Pete Davidson would joke about how it's annoying to be Timothy's friends as he's both attractive and talented. Davidson then went on to tell the Gold Derby, usually you're only allowed one like I am, but I don't know which one it is. It's debatable on both sides. Pete then went on to make fun of Timothy during the interview where he also indicated Indicated that Timothy might not be returning to SNL in the future. Pete then went on to note, he's just one of those people, you're like, what the F is up with this kid? Then you meet him, you're like, oh, oh yeah, I get it. Charming, nice, talented, okay, I get it. Beforehand though, back in 2018, Pete Davidson did take a jab at Timothy during an SNL episode when the show did a sketch about Family Feud, and Pete's portrayal of Timothy as a bashful take that portrayed Timothy being a sophisticated young woman had us all screaming. Number seven, Zendaya. When the world was still questioning what was going on with Zendaya and her Spider-Man co-star Tom Holland, no one would expect Timothy Chalamet would call her out for having a celebrity crush on Tom and possibly hinting that there was more to all of our theories. Ahead of their movie release of Dune, co-stars Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya took a BFF quiz for BuzzFeed during which they were asked to name their celebrity crush. In a response, Timothy quickly answered for his leading lady by saying, easy, Tom Holland, to which Zendaya let out this adorable little giggle, but at the same time, she kinda shot Timothy a look like, man, this was supposed to be a secret. Not only would the internet start to gush over Zendaya's reaction, but fans were soon swooning over her notable three seconds of blushing, with one Twitter user pointing out that she just gets happy and lights up every time she hears Tom's name. Number six, Megan Fox. Okay, there's been a lot of rumors swirling since Megan Fox deleted her Instagram page, following reports that she may or may have not just ended her relationship with MGK. With the actor deactivating her account on social media before she left the platform just a few hours after she sparked rumors that her relationship with MGK was over by deleting every photo of Kelly from her Instagram page, she also unfollowed him on the platform. While Megan also went on to purge her following list, she would also be left following three accounts which included Eminem, Harry Styles, and Timothy Chalamet. While it makes sense that she would unfollow Eminem on the platform since MGK and him were 
were beefing and Eminem pretty much destroyed MGK's career after the star came for him. But what doesn't make sense is why the actor would follow Harry Styles and Timothy Chalamet. Now Barstool Sports is suggesting that there may be a little more to the story as the actress may have hooked up with Timothy Chalamet and Harry Styles. And that's why she followed them so she could get one final dig at her ex fiance. Number 5. Melanie Wright Sprouts When speaking to Stephen Barlett's diary of a CEO, he would accuse his estranged mother of being a wicked narcissist, as he previously claimed that she forced him into the acting industry with his brother to help her satisfy her own needs for validation. But the actor now claims his mother is the one that pushed him and his brother into the industry with a view of profiting off of their talent after divorcing his wonderful father. In an interview, he would say, My mother was and is the t artist type she struggled with in many different ways her place in the world. I think she found a tremendous sense of self identity through motherhood and tried to turn it into a profitable business at the same time, which for identical twin boys is going into acting as an economic loophole. But an inside source has revealed that as a single mother, Melanie has explained that she did everything she could to give her sons the best possible life they could have the only way she knew she could, and that she never wished her sons to feel the way they are feeling, and she just wanted them to feel loved. Number 4. Jimmy Fallon When Cole Sprouse appeared on a Zoom version of The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, his set Zoom background picture of Jimmy alone in his own audience, and then they made a joke about how Cole was looking a little more like a waxwork. To the point, Jimmy even had to ask, have you been to any waxworth museums recently? To which Cole would respond by making an uncalled remark about his acting on the show Riverdale by saying, besides the set of Riverdale, no. It was pretty obvious that in that moment, he was talking about the acting altogether on Riverdale, which is honestly pretty ballsy considering the show pretty much got him back into acting, and he still has to act with the people on the the show, so making fun of their acting just proves that the actor is actually pretty self absorbed. Number 3, Madeline Pelt. When Cole and Lily Reinhardt split, Madeline would clap back at the two's breakup by saying it was so cool, but it seemed to be a little too sarcastic. While people were talking about how it was clear that both Cole and Lily were clearly in a bad place before their breakup, Madeline out of nowhere would open up about the breakup when speaking to Access by saying, I love them. I don't even know how they come up with this stuff. Madeline would then go on to note that she never really thought their relationship would last in the long run and that their personalities did seem to clash often when they were together. She would then reveal to people that things felt super heavy in the relationship for a while and it even got too much for the both of them. And this is why they allegedly broke up. It would then be revealed that the pair's breakup was actually really messy as they were on the same show together and they needed to handle things very carefully going forward. Number 2. Reina Silva It seems like just after Cole Sprouse split from Lily, he would find himself linked to a handful of different women, and one of them was named Reina Silva, who he was linked back with in October 2020. So Reina is a Canadian model from Vancouver, and the two seem to have become extremely close, but it would later be revealed that Cole never really saw relationship potential in her, and he only really saw her as a rebound. And throughout the relationship, Reina would make comments about how she was constantly getting compared to past girls in Cole. Cole's relationship, not only by fans, but by Cole as well. Following months of speculation, Cole would finally release his statement that he and Reyna had split, and many would start to speculate that it was because he was on a trip visiting Reyna in Vancouver when he met Ari Fournier. Then in February 2021, Cole would be pictured with Ari and they would be spotted cozying up together in Vancouver. The actor then made his relationship with the model official five months later of July that year, and recently the star gushed about his girlfriend on the Call Her Daddy podcast by saying the current relationship I am in has woken me up to what real compatibility and trust look like in a way that I've never had before. And coming in at number one today, we have Allison Stoner. Back in 2016, Allison Stoner would reveal that her and Cole's relationship ended in a pretty dramatic way when she explained that she used to date Cole, but their relationship ended abruptly and unexpectedly. While the two were actually only 11 at the time, Allison was kind of disappointed in how the actor chose to do it and just wished he would 
could have been a little more mature and picked a better time to do things. As it turns out, that Cole broke up by texting Allison saying that things just weren't working out. But to make things even worse, the breakup occurred on her birthday. Now, they were able to remain friends after the fact, but Allison always had to hold back her heartbreak as this was a pretty rough thing to go through as a preteen. Things definitely did end up on a sour note between the two, and Allison also revealed that Cody was the first boy she ever had a crush on, so she was hoping it would have worked out better between the two. Coming in at number 10 today, we have Ariana Grande. The rumors surrounding Ariana Grande's alleged diva behavior has been circulating online for years now. While Ariana has been denying the claims, in 2014, she would make an appearance on the Australian radio show Mike E and Emma to say, that's not real, that's nonsense. My fans know who I am, my family knows who I am, my friends know who I am, and that's all that matters. However, someone would then disagree with Ariana's claims. E! News correspondent Juliana Rancic would say, I think she does have a little bit of a diva thing going on. The TV host would say, I remember, I think I was at the AMA, she came up to the platform, and I normally stand on the left side of the camera. I had to fight 13 years to get this side of the camera. It's my good side. But I fought 13 years for it, okay? Little Ariana comes over and I feel like bing, elbow in my side. I'm like, what's going on? And they push me to the other side. While the thought of the two stars fighting over their good side to be shown on the camera sounds hilarious, we weren't really surprised Ariana Grande won this round because don't forget, if she wants something, she'll get something. So thank you, next. Coming at number nine, Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera has built up quite a reputation for not being the friendliest person among the Hollywood's elite. One celebrity this pop star has apparently rubbed off wrong with is Valerie Bertinelli. TV host Andy Cohen would once even ask Valerie to spill the dirt on what went on between the two starlets during a 2014 episode on Watch What Happens Live. She would clarify that she and Christina didn't have an all out feud, but the singer did snub her once at one of her ex-husbands Eddie Van Halen's concerts. Valerie would say, I was a fan at the time and I went up to her because she was at a Van Halen concert and I said, oh my God, I think you're a beautiful singer. And she went, yeah, whatever, and gave me the cold shoulder. And I thought, V, I'm a fan, you can't be nice to me. Now it's clear that Christina Aguilera hates compliments. However, after Andy asked Valerie if she's ever seen Christina again, the hot in Cleveland star would reply by saying, I have not, but you know what? She may have gotten better, but I heard she hasn't. And the rumor has it that Christina isn't the nicest person that she's perceived to be on TV and in the movies. It seems like you maybe want to think twice before you give her a compliment because you might just get this unexpected reaction that may just break your heart. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming at number 8, we have Charlize Theron. So you probably shouldn't bother with someone while they're in the middle of a workout. But this is exactly what Tia Mori decided to do during one particular soul class. And it didn't end up too well for her. In 2014, the former child star would recount a time where she allegedly and awkwardly got snubbed by one of her favorite actors, Charlize. Tia would say, she wasn't really nice to me. I said, hi. And she actually rolled her eyes and said, oh my god. Tia would then add that there was no way that she was over the top with her high as she knew how to approach another celebrity. Later on, Andy Cohen decided to rehash the gossip with Charlize on an episode of Watch What Happens Next. Charlize would then say, what a bee, the starlet joked, and when she asked about the stitch, she would then say she never heard this story and she would ask if Tia actually said it or was it just written. When Andy explained that the tale was originated in the tabloid, Charlize would then respond by saying, oh, well, you can't go by that, right? I'm really nice at Soul Cycle, actually, because once my endorphins kick in, I'm actually almost too friendly. Later, Tia would even clear the air in 2017 and say it was all blown out of proportion. But was it Tia, or are you just saying that so she won't roll her eyes at you during the next session? Number seven, Michael Jordan. Now, Michael Jordan is the GOAT when it comes to basketball. Unfortunately, it seems the legendary player's intensity on the court has sometimes translated off it as well. Which huge fan and rapper, Chat Millionaire, realized following an 
incident with the basketball giant in 2009. I saw Michael Jordan taking pictures with girls and I was like, man, this is just that one moment I'm going to ask Mike for a picture. I kind of expected him to say no, so I wasn't mad if he said no. The way he said it, apparently, when Chamillionaire went over to ask for a photo, Michael would say, oh, hell nah, man. I ain't taking no pictures with no ends. While many of us were shocked to hear this, the story would then obviously be picked up and streamed at the time, even among ESPN, which noted, there's also a widespread support of the idea that Jordan is no saint. We can't help but wonder if the public perception of Jordan is shifting. As for number 23 himself, Jordan seemingly decided to prove Chamillionaire's claims wrong, as years later, he was seen posting with fellow rap artist 2 Chainz in an Instagram snap. However, do we think this was just him trying to save his image, or was Chamillionaire actually lying? Number six, Lee Michelle. If you're an A-list celebrity, you should probably avoid being rude to an up-and-comer on the rise. Q 13-year-old Haley Steinfeld, who was en route home after a successful audition in December of 2009. Haley would say, I was on the Paramount lot. Glee also films on the lot, and I love that show. When Haley saw Lee walking to her trailer, she would walk up to her and ask for an autograph. However, Lee would give her the cold shoulder and pretended like she was someone that didn't exist. A guy would then approach Haley and tell her sorry, it's just not a good time. Haley would then reveal that the whole thing was just so sad that she actually practically went home crying. Later, Lee would then tell Gossip Cop, who is known as Just Jared, that she heard that Haley was upset and she felt terrible about it. Lee would then say, the Glee schedule is so jam packed that the PA probably pulled me so I wouldn't be late to set. I never meant to hurt her feelings. She's an extraordinary talent and I look forward to meeting her one day. However, after claims would come out saying that Lee made several of her co-stars lives miserable, while shooting Glee. It's hard to say if she was telling the truth as her personality seems to kind of be snaky at best. Number five, Shia LaBeouf. There seems to be so much drama on the Don't Worry Darling drama that even Shia LaBeouf would be fired from the set because Olivia felt like his combative energy led to actress Florence Pugh to feel uncomfortable. And Olivia felt like she needed to protect Florence. And then text messages between Florence and Shia were released and the exchange would show that there was never bad blood in the first place between the two. And Florence even offered the latter to vent about the drama. After the Midsummer star even expressed her confusion about the actor's concerns that she was scared of him and said, that's sad. Where did you get me being scared of you from? Don't be silly. I'm sorry that you feel that way. For Shy texted Olivia saying that he was leaving the film, he would inform Florence that he was leaving by saying the issues on the set are more than just schedule conflicts by saying, seems clear we have bigger problems than dates. I will back out in the morning. Number four, Miri Yoon. In a statement to ET producer, Miri Yoon wanted to express the absurd gossip surrounding the set of Don't Worry Darling once and for all. After Vulture reported that Olivia and Florence got into a screaming match on the set when they were filming back in January 2021. According to the outlet, Florence disdained stemmed from Olivia's alleged frequent disappearances with Styles. Another pointed out the connection reportedly came from the then new couple when they attended a wedding together and this would come after Olivia had alleged a lecture with the cast and crew about following proper COVID protocols. Following the report, Miri would say, as crew, we avoided addressing the absurd gossip surrounding the movie we're so proud of, but feel the need to correct the anonymous sources who quoted in a recent article. Any allegations about unprofessional behavior on set of Don't Worry Darling are completely false. Miri also also went on to call Olivia an incredible leader and director, but didn't mention Florence whatsoever, which seemed a little fishy. Number three, Chris Pine. Seems like Chris Pine was in a total mood at the Don't Worry Darlings Venice premiere. While the actor was a total vibe when he stepped on onto the Venice Film Festival to celebrate the premiere of his new movie, he would pose for photos alongside his co-stars. While Florence had skipped the presser in the morning, it seems like for the group photos, Chris would be placed in the middle of Olivia and Florence, and he didn't seemed so happy doing it as he was left looking dull, staring off into a distance, trying to fake a smile while he was dealing with the very tense drama of the two ladies feud. Seems like the rest of the cast, like Chris, just had enough. And while he did go on to have a great time with Florence and Olivia when they were both alone, you could tell he wasn't really happy that he had to be close to the two women together. And that he just wanted the drama to be over and to make sure tensions 
appearance were slim that night, he also chose to sit in between Olivia and Harry. Number two, Sydney Chandler. While all eyes were on the Don't Worry Darling cast when they hit the red carpet at the Venice Film Festival, September 5th for the film's world premiere, fans and critics alike discussed whether or not Florence and Olivia would interact with each other. However, what people didn't notice was that Sydney Chandler looked about out of it as she refused to look at any of the cast members as they posed for group shots as she stood in the middle of Harry and Olivia. Sydney would be seen looking off into a distance and it looked like she was saying in her head just pose so they can get enough photos and I can leave this really awkward moment. Seems like everyone was on edge at the film festival because none of them really knew what to expect when it came to all the endless tabloid gossip and all the noise that they were talking about the feud that happened between Olivia and Florence. And it's understandable why Sydney would be so uncomfortable with being in the same room as the two ladies and why she was so on edge because she probably thought Florence and Olivia were gonna lose it on each other and Sydney could sense it and just went into another place in her head. Number one, Kiki Lane. After Don't Worry Darling was released, Kiki Lane would address the prominent remark about her role in the movie just two days after it was released. With a surprising combination of acknowledgement and dissent, the actress would state on her Instagram how she, along with one of her other co-stars, had gotten very little screen time after being cut from most of the movie. After the movie premiered, Kiki would say the best thing about hashtag don't worry darling that I was lucky enough to meet Ariel Stachel. She then went on to shade the rest of the cast and crew by saying they cut us from the movie, but we are thriving in real life. Said that Kiki was set to have a couple of scenes with Florence, with Ariel, and they were just cut from the movie with no notice. At the end of the day, Kiki would shake it off and say she didn't care because she got her check, she got her man, and that she was thriving despite the major disappointment. Starting off this countdown, we have Charlie Sheen. Oh boy. Over the years, Charlie Sheen has done some pretty wild and highly controversial things. Let's take a look at some of these things, shall we? In 2014, Sheen was getting treatment for an abscess on his tooth. Apparently though, during this treatment, he freaked out at the dental technician, hit them, and then pulled a knife on the dentist. His excuse? He was high on which doesn't make that any better. And of course, we have the huge divorce scandal with Denise Richards. Denise shed light on just how bad it was with Sheen. There were 17 pages worth of allegations, including him being violent and physical with her on a number of occasions. So this, among a huge list of other scandals, made a lot of people not like him. Plus, rumor has it that he slept with over 5,000 different women. So that in itself gives him a pretty bad reputation. 5,000. In our ninth spot, we have Tiger Woods. When news broke that Tiger Woods was cheating on his wife, it completely destroyed his career. Soon he lost almost all of his sponsors and his reputation was tarnished. He went from the world's number one ranked golfer and almost lost it all. It all started in 2009 when Woods crashed his Cadillac outside of his Florida mansion. Then apparently his wife, in a rage, used two golf clubs to break the rear windows of the vehicle because she found out that he was cheating on her. Woods was like, no, 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 she actually smashed the window to save me from the vehicle. But of course, that wasn't the case, and people began to wonder what was up between the two. That's when US Weekly published a report that Woods had an affair. Shortly after, dozens of women came forward saying that they too had a relationship with Tiger Woods. Honestly, in 2009, this was one of, if not the biggest scandal of the year. I remember everyone was all like, ooh, Tiger Woods, I don't trust him, he's a cheater. But it seems like they have moved on from all that, and they're letting him get back to golf. Moving on at number 8 we have Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan was one of my favorite actors as a kid. Like, hello? Parent Trap? Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen? Mean Girls? She was in so many iconic movies. But sadly, the fame and fortune took a toll on Lohan. In 2007, she was arrested for drinking and driving. She went to rehab and two weeks later she was arrested again. This time for possession of another DUI and for driving with a suspended license. This was just the beginning of Lohan's downfall. Over the years, she struggled with her drug and alcohol addictions. It really took over her life and ruined her career. And apparently when she did try to get back into acting, she was a complete diva on set and wouldn't want to leave her trailer to film the scenes. I really wish things would have been different for her. In our seventh spot, we have Lady Gaga. I remember when Lady Gaga first rose to fame, people were so weirded out by her. Her songs were hella catchy, but people weren't too fond of her crazy outfits or unusual music videos. 
photos. She received so much backlash for wearing that meat dress at the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards. Also, remember when she like hatched out of an egg or that time she covered herself with fake blood on stage during a 2009 VMA performance? Because Gaga pushed the boundaries, people were not a fan. And immediately, they labeled her as someone who should not be trusted. Nowadays, things are different though. Her award winning performance in A Star is Born made people see just how talented and down to earth she really is. Also, can we talk about that movie real quick because I bawled. Like I bawled. I can't get over it. Moving on to number 6 we have the Kardashians. You either really love them or you really hate them. Over the years the family has had their fair share of scandals. From Kylie's recent swimsuit scandal to Kim and Kanye drama to denying getting work done, you name it. Sure, they might be entertaining to some, but to others they are bad role models and are setting the wrong example for kids. But if you are a fan, let me know in the comments below which Kardashian is your favorite and why is it Kylie? <laughs> I feel like everyone just likes her. No shade. She's cool. Number five, Molly Stevens. While not a celebrity in the Hollywood sense, to many fans of the singing competition The Voice, you will surely remember Molly's stellar audition with the song Heavenly Day. Kelly and fellow voice judge Blake Shelton hit their buttons almost immediately, which on this show, getting a button hit is actually a pretty good thing. The gimmick of this show is that contestants audition on a stage while the judges are facing away from them in large red chairs so that they can just judge the singers solely on their vocal abilities. While judges often compare contestants to former musicians that they remind them of or enjoy, Clarkson compared Molly, who is openly a member of the LGBTQ community, to stars like Melissa Etheridge and the Indigo Girls, who are also members of that community. On top of this comparison, later on during the competition, Kelly would regularly pair Molly with other performers on the roster who were also open and in the community as well. And understandably, this upset everybody involved. While there was nothing wrong with her co-contestants, Molly called Kelly small minded and claimed that she was pigeonholing her and the other contestants in the community, believing it will somehow increase the team's chances at victory. Molly was eliminated shortly before posting these allegations online, but Kelly claims that she also compared Molly to Patty Griffin, who is straight, and that it was kind of odd for her to leave that part out, but anywho, she's allowed to say what she wants. Moving on. <laughs> Number four, Chance the Rapper. The Voice is arguably one of the best reality singing competitions ever created. The judges judge solely on vocal ability, they build teams for artists to collaborate and move on in the competition. The only flaw? Well, it's the fact that the judges can like steal people from other teams if they want to. During a segment of the series called Battle Rounds, coaches will put two of their own teammates against each other and they will sing the same song together. Following the song, coaches are tasked with choosing who will go on and whose journey ends there. During a recent season of the show, Kelly chose to eliminate a contestant named D Smooth over another one named Allie. As D was giving his goodbye by speech, fellow coach Chance the Rapper hit his steal button, which allows him to steal another team's artist. Chance wanted to work with him so bad and was not ready to see this guy go. Well, Kelly said, oh, you want him now? Oh, okay, never mind. He's mine. She opted to use her playoff pass, which allows both artists in the battle to continue to the next round, but whoever the pass is actually used on gets to skip the next round and move directly to the playoffs. Chance was furious, and Clarkson seemed aggressive when using the move. She's literally quoted acknowledging that she knew that Chance wanted to work with D and just didn't care. It looks like Kelly's letting her dark side take a stroll. If you want something she wants, guess what? You can't have it. No, 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 no. Number three, Katie Hopkins. Katie Hopkins is a British TV personality known for making bold and controversial statements on the regular, and for some reason since 2015, Kelly has been the specific target of these ongoing freakouts. Whenever Kelly is brought up in her presence, she simply scoffs at the notion that her name is even worth your breath. While she regularly dismisses Clarkson's musical abilities altogether, she was once quoted as calling Kelly a chunky monkey. Jesus. Kelly responded to these comments on Twitter and the feud has been strong ever since. These comments coming from a woman who looks like a troll and a Princess Diana had a baby. We should take anything this woman says with a grain of salt. Ah. Moving up. I don't like that lady. <laughs> she must have said all this for some reason. Number two, Carrie Underwood. Rumors of Carrie and Kelly having a behind the scenes beef have been circulating since 2016 when an inside source told Radar Online that Underwood threw a fit after Clarkson was asked to perform a solo on American Idol over herself. According to the source, Carrie caused serious drama with the final production of the show because she flipped out that she was stuck doing a duet with Keith Urban. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Carrie. Is Keith Urban not good enough for you? Just look at that man's hair. 
I'm sorry, we're getting off topic. She went on to say that the duet bogged down her overall press coverage, which was unwanted at the time, seeing as she was in the middle of promoting her tour. A year later, Underwood again expressed her anger towards Clarkson after she was asked to join The Voice as a vocal coach. Carrie wanted that job, and gosh darn it, she let us know. It would appear that there's some jealousy in the air for this one, as Kelly is also mad at Carrie. Why? Well, for being the best-selling artist to come from American Idol. The pair had rarely been seen together before 2018 when they ran into each other at a red carpet event and decided to snap a pic. The combination of the uncomfortable off-screen moments mixed with their film spats on TV makes us think that Carrie was trying to tell us something this whole time. Besides, if you look at the photo they took together, it is very forced. And number one, Brandon Blackstock. Taking our top spot is Brandon Blackstock. Now, while not a celebrity in his own right, Brandon has been working as a success producer and TV executive for many years now. In 2013, he married Kelly Clarkson and the two later welcomed their children, a daughter, River Rose, and a son, Remington. Fans were surprised to hear that the couple were calling it quits in 2020 after seven years of marriage. Apparently, they had a rocky relationship from the get-go and being locked together in a house for a year only made their problems worse. Kelly claims that Brandon is very laid back and go with the flow kind of guy, where she's a little more high strung. Brandon has been warning us over the years of his rocky relationship to Kelly though, simply by using his eyes. Just look at the pictures of him with Kelly. His eyes are saying, hey, what have I done? Help! To spend seven years in a relationship you seemingly want no part in is hard enough, but to have the person that you're divorcing be on TV and in interviews telling people about it is extra brutal. But we wonder if she's doing this on purpose to get her side out before Brandon can reveal his side and possibly confirm the recent allegations of a toxic work environment on the show. Starting off our list today at number 10, we have Dylan Sprouse. It's no secret that Dylan and Cole Sprouse have been acting together for years, as they have been since they were 8 months old. And while they have starred in movies and two beloved Disney Channel series together, there's a high chance that the two will never act alongside each other again. And for Dylan, he has one memory with his brother that would prove this statement, as they pretty much haven't forgotten about the cringiest audition experience they have together for the movie Cat in the Hat. When Dylan would tell young Hollywood when Cat in the Hat was auditioning, of course they would call every single person who looks alike to be thing one and thing two. So we went in and went in full force and I remember we walked into a room and they said go crazy and so my brother and I probably being eight or nine years old just started fist fighting. It was bad and obviously they cut it off and were like you can't do that. But that's what we knew as for crazy so that was crazy. Cringy. Number 9. Lily Reinhart Back in August of 2020, Lily Reinhart really started to open up about her breakup with Cole Sprouse and the emotional months that came with it. In an interview with Refinery29, the actor would say, The last couple of months have probably been the most emotional few months of my entire life. My therapist told me, Your body's going through withdrawal from love. You're used to having this exchange with happy chemicals between you and the person you're with. She then continued on to say, In the moments of my life, I have dropped every ounce of pride that I had and I had to be like Love me. Please take the pain away for a day, a second, an hour, just so I could feel that fix again. And now that Cole has gone on to humiliate the actress in the Call Her Daddy podcast, we're definitely going to see Lily address the comments, and she might not be so kind. After all, she is the queen when it comes to clapping back. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number eight, KJ Appa. KJ Appa and Cole Sprouse are notorious for their near constant teasing and trolling of one another on social media. And while the two may appear to be good friends, they never miss the opportunity to poke a little fun at each other or embarrass each other when the moment arises. 2018 was the year the two went full force into some of the cringiest moments, like the time KJ found a picture of the two both at the age of 17 and he posted it to his Twitter account and in the comments he would tell Cole that he would obviously have crushed him, not only today but also at the age of 17. Cole then went on to poke a little fun back by bringing up how big his check was by saying, you wouldn't have even survived the weight of my wallet. So it's clear that Cole was referencing that he had a lot of money and a lot more than AJ because of his Disney paychecks and his net worth he built from the years of being a child actor on TV and in a movie such as Big Daddy and that he's not afraid to flaunt his massive wallet like his humble castmates. Number 7. Casey Cott Casey Cott, who is known for his role Kevin in the hit series Riverdale, 
Now, once tried to diss Cole Strauss, only for Cole to clap back and diss the actor for the amount of lines he carried in the last couple of seasons on the show. Back in 2020, when Cole made an appearance on The Tonight Show, Casey would share his thoughts on Cole's new bearded look by saying, Why does he keep itching his awful beard? during the interview. Cole then responded by saying, that hairy chin said more words in that interview than you did in the last four seasons. So it's clear that Cole thinks that being an actor with more lines means you're more relevant and Casey just with his short little tweet exposed this. But what Cole got wrong is you don't need to have a big part to be a fan favorite or to hold a huge impact in a scene as some of the biggest actors have had no words in certain scenes and their impact was huge. And a lot of people hit the comments to state that at the end of the day, they still love Kevin more than they love Jughead. Number six, Alexandra Cooper. When Cole Sprouse sat down with Alexandra Cooper on her Call Her Daddy podcast, what he wouldn't know is that the podcast would expose his true personality and fans would not be happy. Right after the post was posted, Riverdale fans would throw Cole Sprouse into the heat after he humiliated Lily Reinhardt. When sitting down with Alex to discuss his much publicized breakup, the former sweet life of Zach and Cody star revealed that almost every one of his girlfriends have cheated on him, but the bone that Twitter had to pick with Cole was the truth on how their relationship ended. Lily and Cole, who dated for two years, split back in 2020. While initially it was stated their breakup was mutual, he switched up his story by saying, it was me. I left. It was time. It absolutely lasted longer because we worked together. There was a lot of pressure, and you think if I had loved myself more, I would have left earlier. The footage posted would also show Cole had little no respect to the host while he was constantly smoking inside throughout the interview and we would have never known his true colors if she never posted this podcast. Number 5. Lourdes When Madonna's daughter Lourdes' romance with Homeland star Timothy Chalamet ended, Timothy would be quickly spotted locking lips with a brunette at the West Way after a premiere of Rock Doc Mistaken for Strangers, an inside source who attended Levi's Bash, would then state that Timothy even asked for the photos of the two to be erased. The mysterious Serious girl was even noted to be a graduate from LaGuardia High School where Timothy and Lourdes met. Madonna frequently did have her bodyguard attend the dates with both Timothy and Lourdes and their split would come just after Timothy was caught smooching with another girl at the school which hints that he may have cheated on her. And then Lourdes would actually be pictured looking fairly gloomy out in public. Number 4. Harry Styles Back in 2018, Harry Styles would ask Timothy Chalamet if he can eat peaches still after his character in the movie Call Me By Your Name had to get pretty intimate with one, to which the actor told the singer that he was actually still able to eat peaches after he said, um, I can, but not without thinking about it. Harry then decided to make the interview a little more awkward for the actor when he said that after he watched the movie, he had a hard time eating one of his favorite fruits. Timothy then would be left in a position where he would say, that's the most awkward scene to see with your your parents in the whole world. My poor father! To which Harry would know maybe he's not the only one in Timothy's family to try this gesture as his father might be into peaches as well. Timothy would also note since the film, crew members on set almost at every stage door hand him at least a peach or two when he enters the set and even his fans have asked him to sign them. Number 3. Army Hammer So back in 2021, Timothy Chalamet would address the allegations that were made against his co-star Army Hammer. When Timothy was asked in an interview about ARMY, he made his first comments on the widely publicized scandal that caused ARMY to become a disgraced actor by saying, I totally get why you're asking that, but it's a question worthy of a larger conversation and I don't want to give you a partial response. With the two being so close, fans then started wondering why Timothy didn't respond to the allegations that were being made about his co-star It makes you wonder why he even wanted to have a larger conversation about the matter. Then it makes you wonder wonder if maybe he chose to be quiet about the situation because he knew what was happening behind closed doors and he just didn't want anyone to know his involvement in the matter. Number 2. Brian Swordstorm Back in January, Timothy Chalamet's agent would shut down reports that indicated that the actor had auditioned for the leading role in Gladiator 2. With the rumors swirling around online after the news broke that Normal People star Paul Mescal was set to take on the role in the sequel, unverified accounts started to claim that 
other contenders for the role included the likes of Austin Butler, Miles Teller, and Timothy Chalamet. However, later Timothy's agent Brian would quickly enter the conversation to refute the viral rumors by taking to his Twitter page to say, I know one of these actors was shooting a film in the Middle East for the past several months, and he hasn't auditioned for anything in the last seven years. Brian's tweet would then spark a mixed reactions from fans as many started to bring in Timothy's industry connection into question to why the actor hasn't really had to work hard for his roles due to his uncle being a director while his maternal grandfather was also a writer and screenwriter. Probably it would have been best for Brian just to stay quiet on this matter as now fans are assuming Timothy has never had to work hard for any of his roles in the industry like everyone else has. And coming in number one today we have Florence Pugh. It's fun to think about what current young movie stars will eventually look back on most fondly and with the most respect in the decades to come. For the moment, it certainly feels like we have Florence Pugh and Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya. They're among the brightest stars we have right now and Florence has even compared her co-star Timothy Chalamet to being this generation's Leonardo DiCaprio. And it wouldn't be the first time this comparison has been made. However, I don't know if it's a compliment and if it was supposed to be a good thing or a bad thing as it seems like lately Leonardo DiCaprio has been making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Especially when it comes to him dating a woman like a 19 year old model which he was recently linked to last weekend. So while Timothy may be an amazing actor like Leonardo, it makes you wonder if he may share other qualities like the same quality of liking younger women and if Florence was hinting at that. So coming in at number 10 we have Olivia Wilde. Even before its release, the set of Don't Worry Darling was plagued with rumors of a feud between co-stars Olivia Wilde and Florence Pugh. While not a lot is known about what happened behind the closed doors, it hasn't stopped a serious amount of speculation from circulating online with people trying to uncover the reasons behind the alleged feud with the cast on the set. Despite director Olivia Wilde shutting down the rumors of any disagreement between her cast members, reports have suggested that the rumors first began gaining attention when Florence didn't promote Don't Worry Darling unlike her promotion for other projects she was on. Then there were rumors that were fueled with other reports suggesting that Florence was uncomfortable with Olivia's relationship with Harry Styles as some sources claim that the pair were growing on set after the director split from Jason Sudeikis and an insider would tell Page Six, I can tell you a fact that Flo seeing Olivia and Harry all over each other on the set didn't go down well as Olivia was still with Jason when she first hooked up with Harry. Jason and the kids visited Olivia on the set in the beginning a few times, so I think this just made Florence feel a little uncomfortable. Number 9, Jason Sudeikis. Just as the drama on the set of Don't Worry Darling was taking off, Florence was set to make a cameo on an episode of Jason Sudeikis' show, Ted Lasso, but the scene was abruptly cut. The shocking claim would be made by a Twitter user who shared a photo of Florence on the set of the show that was believed to have been taken sometime in 2020. In the tweet, the user would say, I've just learned that Florence had a cameo in Ted Lasso that got cut. The story has layers to it, people. At the same time, it would then be said that Florence also split from her boyfriend, Zach Braff, who she dated for three years, and he actually directed that episode. And this is why many people started to speculate that this could be the episode that Florence was meant to make a cameo appearance in, and Jason removed it because he was good friends with Zach. Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in number eight, we have Harry Styles. While there has been much speculation about behind the scenes scandals to what actually happened on the set of Don't Worry Darling, little light has been shed on what sparked the sensational drama. However, it has been claimed that the leading lady Florence and on-screen lover Harry Styles shared an off-screen kiss during the filming, and the innocent smooch was to blame for all of the resulting uproar. A nanny, who used to look after Olivia and her ex Jason Sudeikis' two children, alleged that the actress complained to her then-fiance that Harry and Florence were hooking up behind the scenes. Now, it's no lie that Harry and 
and Florence had chemistry from the start which translated incredibly well on screen. On one night they had a bit of a snog and a lighthearted night of fun but that was it. That's when Olivia started to spend more time with Harry and it made Florence unhappy as the two women continued to battle it out. On the set many speculated that this is why Florence didn't seem to promote the movie online like she did with other films she has starred in. Number 7 Zach Braff It seems like Zach Braff and Florence Pugh got together after he gushed about her on Twitter after he complimented Florence on her performance in Lady Macbeth. While fans have always been very critical of Florence and Zach's relationship due to their 21 year age gap in a cover story with Harper Bazaar, Florence would call out the media for their coverage on her and Zach by saying, Whenever I feel like the line has been crossed in my life, whether it's paparazzi taking private moments or moments that aren't even real, or gossip channels that encourage members of the public to share private moments of famous people walking down the street, I think it's incredibly wrong. I don't think that people just because they have this job that every aspect of their life should be watched and written about. We haven't signed up for a reality TV show. While the two broke up in 2022, Florence would also state that they were trying to do the whole separation thing without the whole world knowing because it was a relationship that everybody had opinions on and they felt like they would benefit from not having a million people tell them how happy they were not to see the couple together any longer. Number 6 Will Poulter After Florence and Zach broke up, Florence would have to teach the world another lesson and this time it was when she had to address the rumors that she broke up with Zach and moved on with her midsummer co-star Will Poulter. After photos started to circulate that Will and Florence were on a holiday with friends in Ibiza, the media would be filled with speculation that Florence was no longer with Zach and that she moved on with her midsummer co-star Will. Florence would then come out to address the rumors when she said, this is getting a little silly now, no Poulter and I are not dating. We went to the beach with our friends, we were about half a meter away from each other in every picture, but my friends have clearly and cleverly been cut out and framed out so it looks otherwise. Florence would then go on to speak about how damaging the impact of these accusations can be, that she understands it is a job but fabricating things does more damage than good. Number 5 Jennifer Lawrence Jennifer Lawrence has been considered by many to be Hollywood's quirky it girl as she is always one to speak her mind. She tends to fall in public and she's generally viewed as being super relatable by her fans. But is this Oscar winning starlet taking her fame for granted? When Jennifer sat down for an interview with Adam Sandler in 2017, the variety actor on the actor series, the two would discuss the negative aspects fans have and that sometimes they just don't understand what it means by respecting someone's personal space. Jennifer would go on to say, Once I enter a public place, I become incredibly rude. I turn into a huge a-hole. She would then go on to explain that she does this so she can defend herself because when her fans ask her to take a selfie, she just finds the whole moment super icky. Well, Adam, on the other hand, went on to make this really awkward laugh. At the remark, he would then try to offer his own two cents to the young starlet. He said, I don't shut them down. My new move has been it works all right when it's an older guy. I say, you don't want that man. Nonetheless, the damage was already seemingly done as her explanation didn't quite rub well on many of her fans. I mean, considering these are the people that put money in your pocket, maybe just politely decline the photo and opt to get to know them instead because a lot of your fans are actually the people who inspire to be you one day. And number four, Chevy Chase. Now, Pete Davidson has had his fair share of celebrity feuds and one of his sparring partners is no stranger to controversy. Another former Saturday Night Live star, Chevy Chase, wasn't a fan of the show's 2018 cast. As he told the Washington Post, I'm amazed that Lauren has gone so low. How could you dare give that generation worse stuff than they already have in their lives? It drives me nuts. Davidson didn't take this too kindly and he would respond by telling Howard Stern that he hated Chevy Chase because he is generally a bad person, a racist, and he simply just didn't like him. In the true Chevy fashion, the comedy star would then tell CBS Sunday morning with a laugh in February 2022 saying, uh, you know who I am and I like who I am and it's a part of me and I don't care. Thought about that a lot and I don't know what to tell you man. I just don't care. Chase of course has also been accused of controversial behavior on set with his former community co-star Donald Glover allegedly being the target of racist jokes. As the show creator Dan Harmon told The New Yorker in 2018 for his part, Glover said, I just saw Chevy as fighting time. A true artist has to be okay with his reign being over. 
but I know there's a human in there somewhere. Number three, Mariah Carey. Now, lots of celebrities have been accused of diva behavior, and some have even owned it but perhaps few have been called a diva as many times as Mariah Carey has. It's no lie that Mariah is incredibly talented, however, she isn't everybody's favorite cup of tea. Just ask fellow singer Demi Lovato. Back in 2016, the former Disney Channel star made her feelings about Mariah perfectly clear by saying, the woman is mean for no reason. Extremely talented, yes. Superhuman, possibly. Unnecessarily rude, absolutely. While the star would go on to post this as a comment on a since deleted Instagram post, her comment would come on the heels of another removed post of Mariah in which in which the always be my baby hitmaker seemed to dis Ariana Grande. As well, Mariah infamously continued the I don't know comments regarding Jennifer Lopez. Now it's not hard to imagine that Jennifer, Demi, and Mariah won't be getting together anytime soon, but whatever distaste Mariah had or did have for Ariana must have dissipated as in 2020, the two alongside of Jennifer Hudson collaborated on Mariah's Christmas track, Oh Santa, and Grande would even join Mariah at the end to harmonize with the latter's signature whistle tone runs. However, while we all imagine Mariah to be so over the top, none of us really expected her to be this mega diva with no control and it was pretty disappointing to see. Number 2 Jennifer Lopez Rosie Perez and Jennifer Lopez worked together on Living Color in the early 90s. Perez was the choreographer for the sketch comedy show and even fought for Jennifer who appeared in over 60 episodes to get her big break as a fly girl. In her 2014 memoir, Handbook for an Unpredictable Life, Perez would claim that the Waiting for Tonight hitmaker on set behavior was inappropriate. All of the girls were coming into her office and complaining about how Jennifer was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and Rosie to her advantage. Rosie would then claim that when she addressed the issues, Jennifer responded by screaming and pounding her chest. Unfortunately, their apparent feud heated up following Jennifer's exit from the show, with Rosie accusing her of acting fake and friendly. Rosie would also go on to say, I was blindsided. I thought we were cool. I called her up and she wouldn't pick up. Shortly after Jennifer ended up ghosting her, Rosie would run into her at a club and instead of remaining cool, she went in with her biting tongue and gave Jennifer a piece of her mind. On the positive side, it does seem like Rosie doesn't hold anything ill will towards Jennifer these days. As she's even said, I don't hate Jennifer Lopez. I had great respect for her. Yes, we had a tiff and it was 20 years ago and I write in my book, I've moved on and I'm sure she has also. However, who knew Jennifer was actually so hard to work with on set? And it's actually pretty surprising to hear. And coming in at number one today, we have Tommy Lee Jones. Oscar winner Tommy Lee Jones is apparently not a fan of Jim Carrey. The two worked together on Batman Forever back in the 90s, and as Carrey recounted on Normal McDonald Live in 2017, Jones didn't mince words when it came to his lack of fondness with his comedic co-star. After Carrey spotted him having dinner at the same restaurant as him, Carrey would end up going over and saying, hey, Hey Tommy, how you doing? And Tommy's face would go white and he would start shaking. And it was at this moment, Jim knew that he was about to have a pretty unpleasant interaction with the men in black actor. Jim would say, and he went in to hug me and he said, I hate you. I really don't like you. While Jim went to find out what the problem was, he pulled up a chair and that probably wasn't the best move to do, but he just wanted to talk things out. And Tommy said, I cannot sanction your buffoonery. Now, Jim kept a mostly good attitude about the incident, summarizing, I was the star and that was the problem. He's a phenomenal actor though, I still love him. Some have since defended Tommy's apparent attitude, however, as pal Richard Jones once told Texas Monthly that, you need to remember, Tommy's got a lot of cowboy in him. He's got a cowboy spectacle about people he doesn't know. For me personally, I don't know who I'm more disappointed in. Tom for not giving Jim a chance or Jim who aired their dirty laundry out for everyone to hear. Number 10, Taylor Swift. This beef began in 2011 during Katy Perry's California Dream World Tour. It was a two year tour and during that time, Katy worked with the same dance crew every show. They got to know the ins and outs of the show to make it as smooth and fun as possible. Following the end of the tour, several of Katy's dancers auditioned to join Taylor Swift for her upcoming tour and they were soon working with another pop icon. After just six months, however, Katy called up the few dancers who had joined Taylor and asked them to return for a gig with her instead. Naturally, they quickly agreed to join and Taylor was out free dancers. Apparently, they weren't actually doing much dancing on the tour and they were just really bored with the project, so they heel clicked at the opportunity to do more. Taylor broke out in interviews claiming Perry intended to sabotage her tour by hiring people from under her nose. Several Swifties claimed that she wrote bad blood about Perry, and if that's the case, well, 
we have been warned and in such a catchy way. Number 9. Lady Gaga On Katy Perry's Prismatic World Tour, Lady Gaga couldn't help but notice a slight similarity between the two, specifically the inclusion of a mechanical horse in Katy's show. On the tour, Katy would come out on stage with green hair riding a mechanical horse, which similarly Lady Gaga rode a mechanical horse on the red carpet on the American Music Awards ceremony the year prior. She took to Twitter to call out Perry, saying, well, I guess green hair and mechanical horses are like a thing now. And it seemed that these two did not like being compared to each other, Gaga especially. In an interview with Billboard, Gaga said that she didn't know what the F all she had to do with Katy Perry, their music is so different and she basically fits into her own category. Whether it was to prove a point or to take the attention away from Perry, Gaga proved her uniqueness by giving a highly controversial performance at that year's South by Southwest festival. During her performance, now this is just a quick warning for anyone who is squeamish, please skip ahead like 30 seconds if you don't want to hear this, Gaga had a vomit artist continuously throw up on her during the show while she continued singing. That is just gnarly. Katie, if you've upset someone to the point of doing that on stage, maybe look inward. Number 8. Miley Cyrus Miley and Perry's relationship is the textbook definition of the term frenemies, and it's only gotten worse over the years. Their friendship began in 2008 when Katy claimed that her song I Kissed a Girl was about the Hannah Montana star, and even invited her to be Katy's special guest at that year's Video Music Awards. Recently, Perry decided that she wanted to go see Miley in concert, and Miley took advantage of that situation to spark some buzz on social media. Katie was sitting in the front row and Miley came over and took the opportunity to plant one on her frenemy. Seemingly playful at first, however Cyrus attempted to involve her tongue in the moment and Perry was not having it. She later said in an interview that she had to pull away from Miley as fast as possible because Miley's tongue is infamous. Who knows where it's been? Well, Miley took to Twitter to respond saying, Girl, if you're worried about where tongues have been, it's a good thing your ex boo is your ex. Cause we all know where that tongue has been. This is of course in reference to singer and ex-boyfriend John Mayer, who has been romantically involved with like most of Hollywood. But was it Miley trying to warn us about Perry, or does her tongue have a mind of its own? Who knows? Number 7. Calvin Harris Calvin is a Scottish DJ, record producer, and singer-songwriter. His debut studio album, I Created Disco, was released in 2007, and he's made waves in the music business ever since. Calvin was all set up to open for Katy back in 2011 for her California Dream Tour, but he dropped out at the last minute, blaming the tour's production team. Apparently, her team had suddenly moved the goalposts and he was to appear on stage without production. Now, moving the goalpost is a term meaning change something last minute, and this change meant that Calvin would be on a tiny portion of the stage alone for 30 minutes and it made no sense for him to show up for such a minimal role. Now, even though his claims weren't aimed towards Katie herself, she definitely took it personally and decided to throw some shade right back at the DJ. She posted several lists of artists opening for her tour that apparently had no problem with the last minute changes. She ended one tweet with, It's fine, I'm used to you cancelling on me. It's becoming your staple. Apparently he had to cancel last minute for a concert prior to that one, only that time it was due to a scheduling conflict, so like, hey, take it easy Katie. Clearly Calvin knows better than to perform for Perry, he cancelled twice, he's clearly trying to tell us something. Number 6. Chief Keef Hip hop artist Chief Keef released his breakout hit I Hate Being Sober in 2012 featuring Wiz Khalifa and 50 Cent. Keef was just shy of 18 at the time so his song being so popular at such a young age was a massive deal. But not to Katy Perry. In fact, Katy made it a point to let her fans know that she wasn't into the song by going on Twitter and letting everyone know that the lyrics quote, made her have serious doubt for the world. According to the news outlet Billboard, Keefe took serious offense to her tweets and decided the most appropriate reaction was to tweet a bunch of nasty things in response. And I will be paraphrasing this of course. <clears throat> he tweeted, That snitch Katy Perry can suck the skin off my duck, I'll smack the poo poo out of her. He also claimed that Katy's name would surely be popping up in his music in the near future. Katy tried to take back her tweets claiming that she didn't know it was Keefe's song. Hey. Katie, uh, you know that if you're listening to a song at any point on anything, the artist's name is like almost always directly beneath the play button. It's not like I listen to Hot and Cold and I'm like, oh, who is this? I have no idea. Keith shared Katie's apology but did not respond to it. 
He did however keep his promise and worked Katie into his song Ha Ha. Unfortunately his rhymes were not as harsh as his tweets. Like come on Twitter, the music industry is clamping down harder on swear words than you. Number 5. Lily Allen Lily Allen is a British pop star and was not very pleased when Katy Perry described herself as a skinnier version of Allen. According to Lily, their first meeting was frosty and she shot back at Katy for fat shaming her by taking digs at her music, claiming Katy Perry was discovered because of Allen. Katy was signed by her label in America, as they needed to find something controversial and kooky. Allen went on to call Katy out for not writing her own music and called the lyrics that she does use crass. Katie addressed the feud in an interview with Us Weekly where she like fake apologized by making light of her comments. She called what she said a joke and claimed that she was just trying to be funny. She's quoted as saying, comedians are not necessarily to be taken super seriously. Hey, uh, last time I checked you were a pop star and not John Mulaney. The tweets were offensive and rude and Lily's reactions were handled very well. Katie needs to get a filter or something cause she seriously can't seem to keep her negative thoughts inside of her head like the rest of us. Number 4. Bo Burnham Comedian Bo Burnham is much more than your average stand up comedian. Bo is a lyrical genius, being able to make us laugh and cry with the simple click of the next button. In Bo's Netflix special Make Happy, he plays a song called End Yourself where he refers to Katy Perry several times. His hatred towards the pop star is vague at first, but he goes on to sing, if you search for moral wisdom in Katy Perry lyrics, then end yourself. In an interview with Rolling Stones, Burnham expressed why celebrities are often the inspiration for his lyrics. He said that it was him trying to advocate on behalf of the audience. These people act like they're somehow better humans, and we've become filled with joy when they get on late shows and act like human beings, and it's just like, who cares? Yeah, who cares about Katie and her dark horse? Yeah, you're right, you go Bo, you go Bo. Number 3. Ruby Rose A few years ago, Katy Perry went on Saturday Night Live with a kid in a backpack and performed Swish Swish Live for the first time. The song was pretty popular and it introduced the world to flossing. So. So I guess that's Katie's contribution to society. When first released, she was quick to say that the song was not about anyone in particular, but Katie's fans were convinced that it was a response to Taylor Swift's song Bad Blood, which is 100% about Katy Perry. Actor Ruby Rose, who you may know from the series Orange is the New Black, is a part of Taylor's inner squad and took to Twitter to defend her friend, apparently forgetting that Bad Blood even existed. She tweeted, <coughs> Purposeful poop to bomb a petite to a sloppy mess of writing over the top of Fukunaga. Stop trying to make it with, I mean, fetch happen. What? Like, what? Can someone get Tom Hanks from the Da Vinci Code in here? Because I have, like, no idea what I just said. Anyone who isn't Katy Perry would be just as confused, but apparently to Katy herself, these tweets were like a dagger to her heart. Oh, it's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo to me. Now let's decode, shall we? In Perry's song, Chained to the Rhythm, she was quoted as saying she hoped it would start a trend of purposeful pop, aka the purposeful poop part. The second part refers to the song Bon Appetit, which was received poorly by fans and critics, and of course, the last part is a Mean Girls reference for some reason, but like, leave that beautiful movie out of this Ruby. Ruby took back the cryptic tweets not long after posting them, but her message was clear. Okay, well not really, but we figured it out. Number 2. Russell Brand what many people may not know is that Russell Brand was actually married to Katy Perry for a short time. During their brief marriage though, Russell recounts being uncomfortable for a majority of their public outings. He's quoted as saying, I'm associated with the very thing I detest. Vapid, vacocious, plastic, constructed, mindless celebrity. People are like, oh, who's that guy? And that guy is married to Katy Perry. Eventually the pair decided to get a divorce. Okay, well Russell decided that he wanted to get a divorce and apparently notified Katie about it over text. After they split, Perry wound up in Russell's stand-up act on a regular basis. He compared his love life with Perry to that of a monk's. He said, when you're a monk, you're not allowed to make love with anyone. If you're married, you can, but only with one person. That's one more than monks. That's not that different. According to Katie, she hasn't actually spoken to Russell since their split, but she totally should, right? 
If someone was making fun of me on stage without my knowledge or permission, I'd find out who's doing it and I'd ask them to please stop. Russell is only being given a stronger platform for himself to warn us about Katie and her plastic persona, so maybe hop on that one, Miss Perry. And number one, American Idol. Recently, Katy Perry took to social media to announce that she wants to quit the successful singing competition American Idol after six years over fears that she's being thrown under the bus by producers who edit the show to make her seem like the nasty judge. Katie has faced a slew of controversy and scandal over this current season of American Idol, and it seems like it's all becoming just too much for her. For those who don't know, on the recent season of American Idol, Katy Perry had an interesting reaction to a contestant revealing that she was a mother of three and much older than she looked. Katie stood up out of her chair and almost laid on the judges table. The contestant Sarah Beth joked that if Katie laid on the table that she would die. And Katie responded with, Honey, you've been laying on the table too much. <laughs> that, that's just so mean. At first everyone laughed at this, seemed like it was all good fun, but following her audition, Sarah announced that she would be going back to California to be with her family, claiming that she just wasn't cut out for show business. But later, she took to Twitter to call Perry out for the joke, which was both mom shaming and something else shaming. I, I can't say the S word on YouTube. While this was a one-time incident, Katie has been known to be shady during her time as a judge, and her comments aren't always as helpful as I'm sure they're meant to be, so it's not really hard to make her seem like the bad judge. Coming number 10 today, we have Miley Cyrus. At one point, Selena Gomez and Miley Cyrus were pretty good friends, and as their fame started to take off, their environment would grow to be the perfect storm for jealousy, self-loathing, and unreasonable competition. Things even got so bad between the two, at one point, Selena and Miley were even characterized as mortal enemies battling it out for the ultimate Disney crown. The feud all started when Miley started dating Nick Jonas and after they broke up, he became romantically linked to Selena Gomez. After Selena confirmed her relationship with Nick Jonas, over the next couple of years, the girls would have a number of small passive aggressive and ultimately meaningless gestures that took place on both sides. Like back in 2008 when Selena and Demi made that YouTube video and then Miley and her friend Mandy made fun of the video by spoofing it. While it seems like the stars have no bad blood today between them, they definitely aren't exactly friends either. Number 9. Justin Bieber. It's clear that Justin Bieber isn't really happy since his wife, Hailey Bieber, and ex Selena Gomez developed a close bond recently. It's said that the Peaches singer has even warned the model to keep her distance from the Wizard of Waverly Place actor as he is concerned that something might go wrong. An insider would then tell In Touch Weekly that after years of being pitted against each other, Selena and Haley are finally on friendly terms. However, Justin is freaking out over them comparing notes since their pictures from the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures second annual gala went viral. He then warned Haley to keep her distance from Selena, despite calling a truce. As far as Justin is concerned, he believes all hell can break loose at any moment. Which is only fair as he and Selena had a pretty messy breakup and Justin's fans have been urging him to leave Haley for some time because everybody's still stuck on his relationship with Selena Gomez. Coming number eight, The Weeknd. The Weeknd didn't seem to have the nicest things to say about Selena Gomez after the two broke up in October 2017 after 10 months of dating. But it's not really surprising since Selena did leave him to reconcile with her ex-boyfriend Justin Bieber as the two were spotted kissing less than a month later. Later, The Weeknd would even write a song called Call Out My Name, which he told the story of their relationship and he seemingly threw shade at how quickly his ex moved on by singing, I guess I was another pit stop, till you made up your mind, you wasted my time. He then also appeared to take aim at Selena on several other songs from his other EP, which widely speculated to be about the breakup. On the song Try Me, he would sing, don't mess with me, the way I kissed your scars, the way I fixed your heart, don't you mess with me babe, while his track Privilege would call out Selena's life when he sang, enjoy your privilege life, cause I'm not gonna hold you through the night, we said our last goodbyes. The Weeknd never confirmed that the EP was about Selena, but he would tell Esquire that it was short because he had nothing else to say on it. Now why anyone would ever want to leave The Weeknd for Justin Bieber is beyond me, but Selena's true colors showed when she did just that. Number 7. Ariana Grande Ariana Grande and Selena Gomez have never really exactly been friendly with each other and it all goes back to one person, Justin Bieber. After Selena and Justin officially broke up, Selena 
Christina set it as her goal to ruin Justin's career and she caused a lot of chaos in the process. So before Ariana became famous, she was actually this huge Justin Bieber fan and she always supported him and defended him throughout her career. So after Justin was branded as the world's biggest a-hole thanks to what Selena was leaking to the press about him, aka him being a cheater, Ariana would then stand up for the singer and claim that he was actually a really nice person. But it seems like the girls really just couldn't stand each other because Selena was always really jealous when it came to other girls being around Justin. And when Ariana was opening up for Justin on tour, Selena would end up fuming over the idea. And when Ariana was set to sit beside her during the KCAs, Ariana even moved her seat to sit somewhere else Why Selena stayed in the same place. Number 6, Sophia Ritchie. Back in 2016, Selena made a comment about Sophia Ritchie's and Justin Bieber's relationship. Sophia would then weigh in on the drama and support her rumored boyfriend, Justin Bieber. In case you forgot, this is when Selena called out Justin Bieber for sharing back to back photos of Sophia and then threatened to make his Instagram private so people would stop hating on her. Selena would then write, if you can't handle the hate, then stop posting pictures of your girlfriend, lol. It should be special between you two only. Don't be mad at your fans. They love you. Though Justin provided his own response, Sophia made sure to show her support for him by saying, Justin is not shutting out his believers. He's thankful every day for y'all. Y'all got him here. He doesn't forget that period. All love. Then Selena and Justin began this really big back and forth that the internet couldn't help but dive into. Number five. Bella Hadid. Now just when Selena started dating R&B singer The Weeknd, Bella Hadid would end up being hella livid because before Selena and The Weeknd got together, apparently Bella and him had plans to eventually reconcile. However, The Weeknd claimed that he was taking a break from his relationship with Bella so he could actually focus on his career and he actually just ended up doing the exact opposite. And that's when he started talking to Selena Gomez, which actually resulted in a lot of tension between the two ladies because after the weekend left Bella, he pretty much jumped right into a relationship with Selena and this really hurt Bella because she loved the weekend and thought that they would ultimately end up together. She was more just livid with Selena though because she was the only one standing in her way of getting back with her ex. And when the two started to date, Bella knew her relationship with him was officially over and that really hurt her. Number 4, Chris Rock. In a display of shade that seemingly had no reason behind it, Chris Rock would very publicly diss Selena by posting a less than kind meme to his Twitter account back in June of 2016. At the time, the comedian would share a snap of Selena smiling and rocking a gold bodysuit while performing on stage alongside the caption, when you buy your formation tickets, on Craigslist. He then wrote alongside the meme, this is true. Understandably, the tweet, which still remains on the actor's account today, didn't go too well with Selena fans as supporters then bombarded them and criticized them. And one fan even said, when nobody will buy your stand-up comedy tickets so you come out on Twitter to slander someone more successful than you. The shade was made all more confusing after it was pointed out that both Chris and Selena had actually gotten along pretty well a few years earlier as they were photographed together chatting on the red carpet at the 2010 Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards when Gomez even sweetly embraced the comedian's daughters. Number 3, Stefano Gabbana. Stefano Gabbana back in June of 2018 wouldn't say the nicest things about Selena when she was on a social media break and he went straight for the comments that surrounded the actor's looks. Just after a fashion account called the Catwalk Italia posted 5 photos of Selena in this stunning red dress, one of the snaps would show the star in a stunning floor length red Dolce Gabbana dress. The Italian account would then tag the brand on the snap. Then for some reason, the co-founder Dolce and Gabbana wasn't a fan of any look, nor was he a supporter as he would comment on the photo. She's so ugly. While Gomez fans slammed the designer in follow up comments, he didn't seem so worried about the raft of the star's supporters as he simply wrote in response. <laughs> Selena then ended up getting the last laugh when she was spotted at New York Fashion Week in September 2018 with the word ugly written in rhinestones on her hair. Number two, 
Demi Lovato. So today Demi has no beef with Selena Gomez. However, she has made it clear that she is no longer friends with the star that she used to be best friends with. Their falling out would allegedly be caused over personal struggles both had to face over the years, as Demi felt like Selena wasn't always there for her and that their friendship wasn't actually really real. While Demi has confirmed that she does have a lot of love for Selena, she just can't be friends with her at this time as she doesn't want to be reminded of her Disney days as they made her feel miserable and overworked. The two girls first became friends when they worked on Barney together and later when they became teenagers they started to drift apart. As Demi started to enter into this really big downward spiral, Selena would then start to distance herself from Demi as she entered into rehab facilities and Demi started to feel like she was being abandoned by her best friend. While the two continued to have this really off and on friendship, both girls personalities continue to clash which leads you to wonder what's truly going on between them and what actually actually happened that made them hate each other. And coming in at number 1 today we have Lord. So Lord is another star who has spoken out about Selena Gomez. And this time it's because of her music. It's clear that the musician is not a fan of Selena's single Come and Get It. And while Lord was speaking to the Rolling Stone in 2013, she would say, "I love pop music on a sonic level, but I'm a feminist and the theme of Selena's song Come and Get It, when you're ready, come and get it from me. I'm sick of women being portrayed this way." Lord would then be asked about her comments by MTV News and she refused to back down by saying, I have pretty strong morals in my opinion being in pop music and I can't help but express those, which I think people appreciate. I mean, I don't think I can say anything that isn't backed up. Most of the times I will stand by things that I've said. As for what Selena had to say about the matter, well she hit back in October 2013 in an interview with Flaunt where she went after Lord for claiming she's a feminist while tearing other women down by saying, that's not feminism. Lord is not supporting other women. That's my honest opinion. That's what I would say to her if I saw her. I actually covered her song in all of my shows that I've done so far. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue that. And number 10, we have Olivia Wilde. Olivia has stated that like any relationship that ends, it doesn't just happen overnight. Unfortunately for Jason, the two have had bumpy roads and it officially dissolved the relationship. And nanny to the couple, however, would later reveal that the actor was so distraught by his breakup with Olivia that he allegedly threw himself in front of a car to prevent her from leaving. Before the incident occurred, Olivia was trying to leave to see her new boyfriend, Harry Styles. However, it said that Jason was chasing her around the house and she could be heard saying, Jason, I'm scared of you. Jason responded by saying, if you're so scared of me, why are you leaving your kids with me? Jason would then go outside and lay under Olivia's car to prevent her from leaving. The two would later come out and say that the rumors aren't true, but the nanny would reveal more later, which would make you question if the two stars were telling the truth or not. And number nine, the nanny. It's said that Jason allegedly threw his nanny out of his house after he was filled with rage over Olivia Wilde's new relationship with Harry Styles. The former employee claimed in an interview with Daily Mail, she received a text message from Jason saying, you're going to get your stuff and get out. Why are you sending these messages to her? The woman then claimed she responded by telling the star he had been drinking and she could tell he was under the influence and that she was afraid of him. A rep for Olivia would claim that the woman chose to resign and that her claims were false. The nanny however told Daily Mail that she did have plans to quit but offered to work for the couple for another 6 months until they found a replacement. However, after the incident took place, the nanny packed her bags and headed to Rosewood London Hotel. When she was asked about a severance pay, she said she was given nothing at all. The whole experience also made her question her career as a nanny and she said she always loved her career and how they treated her definitely upset her. At number 8 we have Jennifer Aniston. After Olivia and Jason first confirmed their split, Jennifer Aniston knew there was something concerning going on with the star. So being the good friend we all know her to be, she made sure Jason had a shoulder to lean on. If anyone knows what it's like to be humiliated romantically but overcome all the obstacles and come out stronger, it's her. A source confirmed that Jennifer became a rock to Jason throughout this nightmare and Jennifer would talk and text to Jason every day to make sure the star was well and she was concerned about the actor's mental state following some pretty serious allegations made by the nanny. She even shared her coping strategies such as meditation, yoga, to help the star overcome his strong emotions with anger and sadness. Honestly, Jennifer Aniston is an absolute angel and I'm glad Jason had at least one friend like her to help him get through this messy split. And number 7, we have Harry Styles. Now, with everything going on, you're probably 
wondering how Harry Styles feels about the whole ordeal. Well, it seems like Harry is doing his best to stay out of this messy divorce, and I don't blame him. With Jason coming out to say Olivia left him for Harry, this is definitely a situation you want to avoid answering, as one bad move can definitely label you as a homewrecker, and that's definitely something the pop star will want to avoid. Harry has taken the time not to reach out to Jason at any point, mainly because he feels like it isn't his place to interfere. With Olivia denying she left Jason for Harry and Jason saying she did, it makes you wonder who's really telling the truth. So what do you think? And let me know in the comments below. At number six, we have Keely Hazel. Being first linked back in 2021, Jason and Keely have split just nearly after one year of dating. The two have been close friends since they first met while filming Horrible Bosses 2. A source claims that Jason wasn't ready for anything serious as he was still processing his split from his fiance Olivia. However, with Keely being ready to get their relationship to the next level, Jason was still devastated over his split with the mother of his children. However, he did feel safe and relaxed with her and the pair did truly enjoy each other's company. Since the beginning, they were friends and they didn't know how long their relationship would last because Jason has stated over and over again he isn't looking for anything serious anytime soon. While Keely was ready to cozy up with Jason, he just was looking for a good time which ultimately led to some problems within their relationship and may have been the reason for their split. At number 5 we have Don Cheadle. Now, Jason had a lot to say during his acceptance speech for best performance by an actor in the television series for his role on Ted Lasso. Now, the actor began to struggle with his words after he found out he won the award. Jason would go on in a long speech that he would thank his family and his co-stars. Now, the humble actor would then go on to say that he rejects being the best actor because in his opinion, the best actor is the person you are acting with. And that's why he had to shout out all of the people he got to act with on the show. Now, at this point, Don started to give Jason the wrap up speech. As Jason was continuing to talk while the fellow nominees started to laugh, Jason would acknowledge that Don was right and he needed to wrap this puppy up. Now, I know if I ever won a huge award, I wouldn't even know what to say and I would probably just stand there and do the classic smile and wave energy before awkwardly leaving. So luckily for Jason, Don was there to help him wrap it up before things got a little too messy. At number four, we have Ice Cube. So Ice Cube once almost got Jason into trouble back in sixth grade. On an appearance for the Late Late Show with James Corden and Ice Cube, Jason explained that he used to write lyrics and memorize them by writing them down. When Jason was back in sixth grade, he loved Ice Cube, so to learn his song, he wrote it down and memorized the lyrics. Well, Jason wouldn't leave out any words. So the night before class one day, he decided to write down all the lyrics to Gangster Gangster. Now the next day, Jason would go to class and he was showing the lyrics with a centerfold from an adult magazine to eight other boys in his class. However, when his teacher, Miss Huffy, came in, she took the paper away and handed the boys their homework before leaving the room. Now, one of Jason's friends decided to scribble on a piece of paper and swap the confiscated paper out before shoving it into his sock. And when the teacher came back and asked where the paper was, no one knew where it went. His friend then started freaking out about it and then the group of boys got sent to the office. Now, the principal was really disturbed because the teacher was telling her the lyrics were violent. And then the boys got busted and sentenced to detention. At number three, we have Florence Pugh. Florence was allegedly set to make a cameo in an episode of Jason's show, Ted Lasso. But then the scene got cut out. The claim was made after a Twitter user who shared the photo of Florence on the set of the show. While the two were having problems on the set of Don't Worry Darling, one user pointed out that they believed the cut cameo was originally filmed in 2020 for the second episode of Ted Lasso's first season. Now it's said that Florence's ex she dated for three years before the pair split broke up earlier that year and he was actually a director on the set. And that could be the reason her cameo was taken out. However, with Olivia and Jason being engaged at the time of their feud, it also could have been the reason why her cameo disappeared from the show. Either way, in the film industry, it's not uncommon for things to get cut and the actors still got paid for their time on set. At number two, we have Kay Cannon. So before Jason was engaged to Olivia, he was once married to Kay Cannon. Now, 
Jason was married to the screenwriter and producer Kay Cannon for four years before separating in 2008. However, for the couple, their careers always came first and this ultimately led to the destruction of their marriage. Jason would later say while he was married to Kay, he had to give up two things he loved the most while he took a writing job for the show. He had to give up performing and living with his wife. Ultimately, Jason chose his career over his wife and chose to go on the show and the two shortly split after. Now, Jason has noted that he did have a sign it was over before he went on the show, but the show just finalized things. With both having really busy lifestyles and big dreams, it makes a lot of sense why the two would split and would still continue to support each other as friends. At number one, we have Chris Rock. It's said that Chris Rock one time hijacked Jason's Saturday Night Live audition. When Jason first auditioned for the iconic sketch comedy show, Chris Rock would go on to steal his thunder. Jason was backstage calming his nerves before he went on set and all of a sudden, Jeff Ross and Chris Rock entered the backstage. Now at the beginning, he just thought Chris and Jeff were there to see the new talent. Unfortunately, Chris wasn't there to watch, but rather to perform. Now Chris is standing right beside Jason and Jason puts his drink down to head to the stage and Chris goes, hey man, was this your big shot? And Jason was like, uh, kinda. And then he went on to say, sorry. Immediately after the interaction, an announcer welcomed Chris Rock to the stage. Now, Jason was a little hurt by the experience. However, before Chris left the building, he wished the comedian good luck and told him that the crowd loves original thought. Number 10, Chevy Chase. In 1978, Murray infamously got into a physical altercation with Chase Chevy. After the star returned to Saturday Night Live as a guest host, it began with the two trading some pretty heavy insults towards each other. It started when Murray telling Chase to go get with his wife, and Chase responded by telling Murray his face looked like something Neil Armstrong landed on. The insults seemed to escalate as quickly as their comebacks did, and television following the rest of the cast watched the two display in a physical altercation. Larney Newman noted, it was a very sad and painful thing to watch unfold during her appearance on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen in June of 2021. In May of 2012, Murray called his part in the scandal a childish feeling of jealousy and anger he let control him. He went on to say things that he was mad that Chevy left the cast of Saturday Night Live and Murray somehow was avenging Angel who had to speak for everybody else. Chevy and Murray are soon back on good terms after the fiasco and everything was fine as the two starred together in the 1980 comedy Caddyshack shortly after the altercation. Number nine, Richard Dreyfuss. Oscar winner Richard explained when he was working with Murray on the 1991 film, What About Bob, that Murray was a bully. He explained that Bill drank a lot at dinner and let his true colors showed and allowed everybody to see how much of a bully he was. When reflecting on his whole experience on set, he highlighted one incident where he asked Murray to read a tweak in the script and Murray lost his temper. He went on to say that the star became face to face with him so close that their noses were touching. Murray then went on to scream at Richard at the top of his lungs and said, everybody hates you, you are tolerated. Richard then went on to note that he had no time to react because Murray then proceeded to throw an ashtray at him. Luckily, the ashtray missed, and rather than making things worse, Richard decided to leave the room. Richard showed us that Murray has a violent past, not just with female co-stars, but also with his male ones. Number eight, we have Laura Zeskin. Richard Dreyfuss wasn't the only person who had problems with Murray and how he handled himself on the set of filming What About Bob. As producer Laura Zeskin has said that she once had a disagreement with Murray, which resulted in him tossing her into a lake. Although at the time she called it playful, in 2003 she claimed the event wasn't so playful as throughout the set, Murray started to become more aggressive. In one incident, Murray asked Laura for an extra day off and when she said no, he had an epic meltdown and took Laura's glasses off before breaking them and throwing them across the parking lot. The altercation caused everybody to walk off production and a bunch flew back to LA to film only after Disney hired some bodyguards to physically separate Murray from harming anyone else between takes. Bill Murray tried to justify his actions in an interview back in 1991, saying he didn't get along with many of his cast and directors 
and all he was doing was standing up for himself. Number seven, we have Harold Ramiz. Bill Murray had a long decade estrangement from his longtime friend and collaborator Harold. Sadly, the two's friendship collapsed while on set of the film 1993 Groundhog's Day. During a heated, created dispute, Harold said he grabbed Murray's shirt collar and the two got into a heated altercation. In a book later released by Harold's daughter Violet titled Ghostbusters Daughter Life of My Dad, Violet would go on to note that the incident happened and Murray wouldn't speak to Harold for over 20 years and even though Harold tried not to take it personally, he was ultimately left feeling heartbroken and confused about the unsurprised rejection. Murray was unheard from up until Harold was in the hospital and Murray showed up to visit his old pal unannounced at 7am in February of 2014 with a box of donuts and a police escort. With Harold losing his ability to speak, he was no longer able to speak to Murray before his passing. However, Murray didn't mind and hung out with Harold for a couple of hours anyways. I'm glad Bill was able to put the two's differences aside and came together for his friend before his passing. Number six, we have McG. Moving on to the set of Charlie's Angels filmed in 2000s, director McG, whose real name is Joseph McGinty Nickel, claimed in an interview with Guardian in May of 2009 that working on movies can be pretty stressful at times, even adding that he doesn't think he's ever been on a film that hasn't had some type of altercation break out. In one incident, his nose was obliterated when his head collided with another. At first he didn't want to recall the name of the actor with respect, however he went on to say it was Bill Murray. And the industry is very passionate industry and people take care of their own work. When Murray heard about the interview, he did his own interview with Times of London in October 2009. The star went on to note that Joseph has a really active imagination and he doesn't understand why he would make up that story. He then took to the situation further by stating a really serious sentence that made many feel uncomfortable. With Joseph coming forward about his experience in past film sets encountering the same situation, it's easy to see why Bill would lie to cover up the allegations, but now that more stars are coming forward, it's clear that McGee had nothing to lie about and was warning us all about the actor before these events could happen again. Number five, Angelica Houston. Adam's family star Angelica Houston was essentially hurt by Bill Murray's behavior on set of Wes Anderson's 2004 film. Angelica said Bill was horrible after working with him and in May of 2017, Houston told Vulture that during her first week of set, Bill invited the entire cast for dinner except for her. She went on to say that everyone went out for dinner a little dog face at the fact she wasn't there or had been invited and throughout the day they were telling her, oh you know, we really don't want to go but they all went otherwise. The whole situation really hurt Angelica. With the film being shot all over Italy, Angelica noted that she didn't see Bill again until they were on set to shoot in Florence. When she entered the set, Bill greeted her and asked her how she was and even said, I miss you. In the heat of the moment, Angelica looked at him and said he was full of it and told Bill that he didn't miss her. Murray is said to be confused for a moment but was unfazed by the comment. Angelica showed us that Bill didn't care about his castmates and he was wasn't afraid to single them out and make them feel unwanted in many situations. Number four, we have Richard Donor. In the 1988 film Scrooge, directed by Richard Donor, follows Bill Murray as he plays a selfish, cynical television executive, Frank Cross, as he's haunted by three ghosts on Christmas Eve. Being the first film that Donor and Murray were set to work in together, Donor was worried because he didn't know if the pair would get along. And considering Murray's past behavior on other sets, I don't blame him. With Scrooge being a box office success, Donor came forward to say that Murray was a super creative actor but occasionally was difficult to work with. He also noted he was only as difficult to work with as any other actor. Cast and crews have gone on to say that the source between the rift between Donor and Murray was mainly because Murray's approach to acting is fully under the approach of method acting. When on scene, Murray has an approach that is somewhat wild and reckless, which can pose difficulties for actors and directors who are more comfortable with working in more traditional methods. 
With there being two sides to every story, Murray went on to say that the two had a disagreement over every single minute of the day because Donor demanded for lines to be delivered louder. Despite their differences on set, the two were still able to work it out and create an amazing film which is still today's best holiday classic films to watch for the Christmas season. Number 3. Gina Davis On the 1990 film set of Quick Change, Gina Davis explained how she was harassed and that she should have walked out. In her memoir titled Dying of Politeness, the Oscar winning actress highlighted the actor once screamed at her on set for being late and continued to yell as he followed her to her trailer on the set. The altercation happened in front of a large crowd cast, crew, and onlookers, but the star noted she should have walked away from their first meeting or profanely defended herself so she wouldn't have gotten the part. Davis and Murray first met in a hotel suite where he continued to try to use a massage device on her throughout her audition after her initial refusal. Davis explained she could have avoided the inappropriate treatment if she knew how to react or what to do during the audition, but she also didn't want to appear hard to work with so she stayed quiet. She then went on to say that there's no point in regretting things, yet she's still here regretting it. This isn't the first time Murray has been linked to inappropriate behavior as recently on the searchlight pictures suspended the production of Being Mortal after allegations surfaced of Murray engaging in inappropriate way towards other cast members. Murray tried to defend his actions by saying, I did something funny and it wasn't taken that way. Number 2. Jennifer Butler On October 12, 2008, Jennifer Butler filed for divorce from Bill Murray, while alleging that their relationship was brutal and uncomplimentary. After 11 years together, the couple's relationship ended with both parties being accused of ugly behavior that played out in front of the press. While filing for divorce, Jennifer also requested at the time that there be a restraining order placed against her husband. While Bill's lawyers did come out to say they couldn't comment on the fact of the case, they did say Bill was deeply saddened by the breakup and Jennifer Butler's accusations against her husband showed that Murray was aggressive both on and off set and that her story should have been the reason the star was cancelled years ago before this mess got any worse. The two remained loving parents to their four children and would remain that way on best behavior for the best interest of their children. Number 1. Lucy Liu Lucy's experience with Bill on the set of Charlie's Angels was truly heartbreaking considering the stars showed amazing chemistry on screen. However, Lucy went on to say that she got into an argument with Murray on set and he started using language that was inappropriate and unacceptable. On the Los Angeles Times podcast, Asian Enough, Lucy said that during the confrontation she she stood up for herself and did not regret doing it. The star went on to note that no matter how high you get on the totem pole, there's no reason to put other people down. Lou went on to say that the clash came during a rehearsal on a scene which had recently been reworked. Bill was unable to come because he had to attend a family gathering and when he learned about it, he was upset and hurled insults at her. Lucy definitely wasn't having it and she definitely wasn't going to sit around and be talked to in a degrading language, so she decided to speak up for herself and stand by the one thing she had, which was her self-respect and dignity. Murray later downplayed the incident by saying, look, I will dismiss you completely if you are unprofessional and working with me. When our relationship is professional and you're not getting that done, forget it. Since the incident, many crew members who were on the set have told Lucy they're really grateful for what she did. Lucy then went on to say that since the film, her and Murray reconciled and that they have nothing bad to say about him. The two started talking at the Saturday Night Live reunion and he was perfectly nice to her, but she also noted she would no longer sit around and be walked all over. Like Lucy, many stars have addressed their concerns about Bill over the years and Hollywood should have been keeping an eye on it before matters got worse. Coming at number 10 today, we have Liam Payne. When it comes to Liam Payne, 
Zayn and Zayn's relationship, it honestly sounds pretty complicated. When Liam appeared on the podcast Impulsive with Logan Paul, when his former One Direction bandmates' names came up, in the context of Paul's brother, social media Jake Paul having a feud with the singer back in 2020, Liam would say, there's many reasons why I dislike Zayn, and there's many reasons why I'll always be on his side. However, at the same time, Liam would then go on to note that he can't commend some of the things that Zayn has done and that he can't be on his side for that. Liam would go on to say, what I can say is I understand and your only hope is at some point in their life, the person on the other end of the phone wants to receive the help that you're willing to give them. Liam would also share insights to one argument he had with Zayn when he would describe the situation, noting that Zayn threw him up against a wall and Liam had to say, if you don't remove those hands, there's a high likelihood you'll never use them again. Although in the past, the former boy banders have restrained themselves from airing out the band's dirty laundry, Liam took the opportunity to provide his half of the story. Coming number 9, Gigi Hadid. After news broke that Zayn got into a fight with Gigi Hadid's mom, Gigi would release a statement to E! News where she said she would like to stay focused on doing what's best for her daughter. A rep for Gigi would also share that she wouldn't be commenting on the news about Zayn striking Gigi's mother. Shortly after, multiple sources would confirm that the pair had broken up, with one source saying they are not together right now. They are both good parents though, they co-parent. Yolanda is of course very protective of Gigi. She wants the best for her daughter and granddaughter. Apparently at the same time, Gigi wasn't in the US at the time when Zayn got into the altercation with Gigi's mother as she was spotted at Paris Fashion Week. It would then be reported that Zayn called her and started to yell at Gigi over the phone and told her to strap on some effing balls and defend your partner against your effing mother in my house. Gigi would then abruptly leave France on the same incident to travel home to tend to the issue. Number 8. Yolanda Hadid News of Gigi Hadid and Zayn Malik splitting up sent shockwaves across their fan bases all over the world. What proved to be more shocking was when we heard Gigi's mom Yolanda accuse Zayn of striking her. While the news created a storm at the time, alienating fans would come to back up the singer. Yolanda Hadid has now been accused of lying about the alleged attack. The former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star allegedly made up the narrative to have her daughter Gigi's boyfriend deported since she's always hated him. According to unconfirmed reports, Yolanda's former aide would then come out to say, word on the street is that her former assistant is the ex-housewife and mama to top models Gigi and Bella. Made up the whole thing about her daughter's baby daddy. She didn't like him. Yolanda got into the fight after she barged into his and Gigi's house in Pennsylvania while the model was abroad on business and it was alleged that Yolanda was then thrown against a dresser and called some pretty colorful language by saying The singer would then later be fined and sentenced to 90 days of probation on the offense totaling 360 days. In addition, he was ordered to start taking anger management classes in domestic violence programs. Number 7. Lewis Tomlinson Former band members Zayn Malik and Lewis Tomlinson had a fight back after the band broke up. It doesn't appear to have ever been fully resolved. Lewis, who lost his mother to leukemia in 2016, was hurt and upset with Zayn. While Liam gave an emotional performance on The X Factor just three days after his mother's passing, three former bandmates, Harry, Niall, and Liam, all came to support him, but Zayn would be a no-show. Later, when Lewis was asked about his relationship with Zayn, he would note that it never fully resolved. He would also go on to say, I had a couple of calls with him after I lost my mom and all the boys had agreed to come to that performance and he didn't show, so that really bugged me. While Lewis hoped nothing serious was going on with Zayn, that would cause him to miss the performance and support his former band member. Over the last couple of years, Lewis has even tried to get in contact with Zayn to see how he was and if he was okay, but it's been really hard for him to get in contact with the singer and that he definitely still wishes him well. However, even though he does wish Zayn the best, Lewis still doesn't think he he's mature enough to get over what frustrated him in that relationship, but he is closer to being over all the drama between him and Zayn. Coming at number 6, Niall Horan. Niall Horan has been pretty open when it comes to his fallout with Zayn Malik. In an interview with GQ, Niall would admit that even to this day, things have been pretty frosty between the two. While speaking about their feud, Niall would admit that Zayn has to be the hardest man to stay in touch with and that they had a falling out a few years ago. Niall didn't go into any further details about what his feud with Zayn was, or even talk about what exactly went down when it occurred, but it also isn't really surprising news as Zayn 
has been pretty open about the fact that he hasn't remained friends with any of the guys since he left the band. Niall also would go on to note that Zayn would probably tell you that he is pretty hard to stay in touch with himself. But Niall doesn't particularly like to talk about him a lot anyways. While Niall would also go on to note when Zayn does have something coming out or going on, he will text him, but he doesn't really get a reply. But at the end of the day, Niall will still give him a shout as he has no bad blood with him but understands some things have a lifespan and hopes the two can put the past behind them one day and catch up. Number 5 Jake Paul When Zayn and Jake Paul were both in Las Vegas back in 2020 for a boxing event, according to TMZ, the two ended up staying in rooms next to each other. When Jake ran into Zayn, he would then ask Zayn if he was going out for the night. This is when the story began to get pretty complicated. According to Jake sources, they would say that Zayn started to be really rude with Jake and told him, I D G A F if you have a good night. This of course would shock Jake and he simply just went to hang out with his brother Logan instead. Then later, when the two ran into each other again, Jake would try to make friends with the singer but Zayn started to yell at Jake and asked him, who the F do you think you are? Zayn reportedly even tried to instigate a fight with Jake. Of course, Zayn sources would have a different story as they would try to claim that Jake was under the influence and kept trying to annoy Zayn by asking him to party multiple times. But either way, to start a fight with someone who is simply just being annoying isn't really justifiable. And while there probably is a bunch of lies somewhere between both stories, apparently Jake doesn't hold a grudge and he's happy to move on. Number 4 Perry Edwards Back in 2016, Perry Edwards would confirm that Zayn ended their engagement but that it wasn't the worst thing that she had to go through with her ex. When Little Mix appeared on UK's Heart Radio following the release of their new single, shout out to my ex, during the visit, Perry would open up about a phone call she received from her ex that caused her to have a meltdown in the middle of the airport. Perry would say I was at the airport and I got an awful phone call from someone and then I just remember screaming in the airport. This would also be the time that Perry would admit that Zayn dumped her over text and she became a woman possessed and it was awful. Fortunately, she had her girls beside her to help her get through the whole ordeal, including the breakup in general. Number 3 Calvin Harris Back in 2016, Calvin Harris and Zayn had a pretty embarrassing Twitter fight. The online tiff would begin when Zayn retweeted a post critical of Swift's refusal to stream her music on the website Spotify. Harris would then step in to defend Taylor who was his girlfriend at the time and would indicate a war of words on the microblogging site by saying, you've made your money cool. F 99% of musicians who depend on these services to survive, right? Yeah, F him. If you don't get what it means when a successful artist uses their celebrity to benefit every other musician and songwriter in the industry, then stay out of my effing mentions. Zayn would then hit back at Kelvin by saying he made an absolute fool of himself by jumping to conclusions and that he needed to calm his knickers before his dentures fell out. Both musicians have since deleted many of the offensive posts although Calvin did end the exchange by telling Zayn it was nothing personal, adding the best of luck to him because he had a great voice. Number 2 Stephanie Davis Back in 2016, Big Brother star Stephanie Davis would reveal that she had to end her relationship with Zayn Malik because he was seeing Perry Edwards. The axed Holly Oaks actress who briefly spoke about her romance with Zayn while in the celebrity Big Brother house admitted that she dumped him in 2011 after she discovered he was meeting up with with his now ex fiance. She would then go on to explain, We dated five months in 2011 just before he started seeing Perry. We broke up because I found out he had been meeting up with Perry. It's said that just before Stephanie and Zayn got together, they were pretty close behind closed doors and that they were able to keep their relationship pretty quiet before they decided to go their separate ways. While the two ended on very good terms, that still wouldn't stop Stephanie from speaking out about dating Zayn in the spotlight following their split by saying, I realize it's too hard to keep a relationship going in this industry. Stephanie would then even reveal that when she did finally say goodbye, they would still speak to each other and she hoped that one day he would finally be happy. Coming in number one, today we have Bella Hadid. Obviously the relationship between Gigi Hadid and her baby daddy, Zayn Malik, has been stretched to its breaking point by accusations he assaulted her mom, Yolanda. But it turns out the singer's friendship with Bella Hadid has also been broken beyond repair according to the US weekly sources are claiming that the model had a major blowout with the former One Direction singer following his alleged outburst with her mother. Bella hates Zayn for
for everything he's done to her sister, which is understandable. The update would come just days after Bella unfollowed Zayn on social media. Bella has chosen to stand by her mom no matter what, and she completely believes her mom when it comes to her story. And Bella is definitely not pleased at the fact that Zayn thought it was justifiable to strike her mom during an altercation that actually wasn't that serious. Before the altercation, Bella actually had a really close relationship with Zayn, but now she feels really betrayed by him and she can't believe that he would do such a thing to her family. While a part of him will always be a part of her life because he is the father of her niece, the altercation between him and her mom is just so distressing.